What's up, everybody? Welcome to a brand new episode of Getting to Know. Uh, on this episode, we are interviewing Wiz Kalisa. Um, I enjoyed the conversation again, like I do with every episode. She's a bundle of energy and so fun to listen to. Stories upon stories. There was a few tangents here and there, but we'll forgive her. Um, so yes, I'm going to play a few clips from her stream, give you an example of, of what to expect from her, and then we'll jump straight into the interview from there. I hope you enjoy, guys. Fuck Donald Trump, y'all. Fuck Donald Trump. Fuck Donald Trump, baby. Fuck Donald Trump. Okay. I'm ready for this. <laughs> Fuck Donald Trump, baby. Fuck Donald Trump, baby. Fuck Donald Trump, baby. Fuck Donald Trump, baby. All right, careful. Run, run, run. Ah, nuts. Smack him. Ooh, left, left, left. Whip, <gasps> left, right there. Yes! Yes! yes. Oh my god, that was good. Wow! Oh my god! Fuck Donald Trump, baby. 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 Fuck Donald Trump. What's up, everybody? I'm here with Wiz Wizington, Wiz Kalisa. How are you doing, Wiz? Great. How are you? <laughs> I'm fine, thanks. <laughs> Thank you for taking part in this. Um, obviously, you're the third person from WeStream I've done so far. As uh, so you've got, you know, a bit of pressure on you to to be on a level pressure. of Bill and Mudge. I'm afraid. I know, I'm not as well spoken as the two of them, so I hope this goes well. <laughs> nah, you're fine. You'll be fine. Uh, we'll, we'll crack straight on into the questions. We won't, we won't mess around. Right on. So uh, the first thing I like to ask people is what got them into gaming to begin with? Was there a, I don't know, a parent or something that introduced you to gaming? How did that all kick off? No parents. Um, I mean, I do have parents, but <laughs> <laughs> I'm an orphan. No, I'm just kidding. This is getting, this is already starting off bad. Um, okay. I didn't say that. Um, so I, the earliest memory that I can bring it back to is definitely my stepbrother. Um, he's six months older than me. So we were essentially the same age. Mm -hmm. um, I remember when before he was my stepbrother, when my when our parents were dating, I went to their house and they had the Nintendo 64 and they had Mario 64. And I just was like, oh my God, that's so cool. Like I didn't see anything like that because my mom and my dad had me and my sister. So like we had dolls and shit. Yeah. yeah. Um, I wasn't really given an opportunity to know what video games were. I did like Pokemon. I'm not sure what happened first yeah but yeah so nintendo mario 64 i was fascinated i always wanted to play it never got to until 3d all-stars and i hated it so <laughs> that didn't end out so well um but i did have a game boy color i played all the pokemon all pokemon that was like my first system well that was my first oh, okay game. your first owned yeah mm -hmm. what so, age what age was that then quite young Ooh, yeah i don't even know i know i couldn't read so i was playing pokemon and i was just <laughs> looking at the colors know. yeah just like yeah this one um and then i played mario brothers deluxe or whatever on the game boy color that was cool and pac-man i played on the game boy not on the arcade thing i did play arcade games but i didn't i didn't associate that as video games right yeah yeah it's um, kind of a bit different isn't it yeah um but then for christmas or something my stepbrother got the gamecube with mario sunshine and i had to have it i had to have it so i got it at my mom's house so i had mm -hmm. video games at my dad's house video games at my mom's house 
my parents were separated when I was two. So I don't want to mull over that detail. That's why I had two different experiences. Yeah, that makes days. sense. Yep. Um, yeah. So I played like, basically I played whatever my stepbrother played or whatever his cousin played. Um, so those were like my video game influences. It was my, my stepbrother's cousin, Kyle, um, he played whatever and my stepbrother looked up to him and then he would play that and then we would play it. So yeah, then he had like a PlayStation two and an Xbox 360. And that's really, that's really it. I never personally owned a PlayStation, um, or an Xbox at my mom's house. Right. Um, so I only got to play those kind of games when I was there. Yeah. Um, but I watched him play and I think now I've started to think about this a lot, but I think that's, and I'm sorry if I'm skipping ahead with no, questions, fine. but that's kind of how like Twitch was so easy for me because I grew up watching my stepbrother play video games right. yeah, yeah. a lot. Um, and we would just take turns playing games. So like Sonic Adventure 2 Battle, um, um, I'm having a brain fart. Um, what's that game? I'm not a big Nintendo nerd. Uh, no, this one wasn't. I'm like thinking about eight things at once, but there was a game, True Crime. It was like, yeah, I think it was True Crime. The New York or something. Was it? it? I think they had different ones, but we had True Crime Streets of LA for the game. Oh yeah. Which was like, which was like, like the baby version of GTA because we never had that. Our, yeah. Uh, my stepmom never let us have that, but we borrowed it from his cousin for a little bit. Um, and I would play it when I went to my cousin's house. Um, but I was really into like the Tony Hawk skating games. Yep. Um, we even played, um, Metal Gear Solid 2, I believe. I didn't know which one it was, um, until I watched Weapon play, um, them again. And I'm pretty sure it was two. Okay. Um, um, and then this is also an important factor. One year on New Year's Eve, we were at like a, my dad's friend's house. Uh, we knew them from church. Um, and they, ha they were like, they were fucking loaded. They had this fancy ass fucking house. They had this like play place kingdom basement. <laughs> Anyways, um, not to dox anyone. <laughs> 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 um, anyways, so we went there for New Year's Eve. The adults got drunk. We were down in the basement, just farting around being kids. And this, one of the girls that were like my age, she was like, oh, have you ever played the Sims? And we were like, me and my stepsister were like, oh no, like, so we played The Sims and I was mind equals blown. Right. Yeah. And I loved, like, I'm just so weirdo. Like, I, I mean, I'm very like girly where I like to like play with doll. I like to play with dolls and like all that kind of stuff, but mm -hmm. I really just like creating things. Yeah. Um, bottom line so I think when I saw that you could make your own house make your own family do whatever you wanted to do I was like bro there wasn't much I else like it was it that was kind no. of really new yeah I didn't even know and like I was just playing on game boy like handheld devices and like some consoles so like I mean I did play computer games at my mom's house but they were just like kitty educational games mm -hmm. I think I played like some game that was kind of like civilization at my mom's house but Okay, like turn based that was sort like of thing. In the 90s. Yeah, it was in like the 90s. I remember making a civilization and everybody always died because I didn't know what I was doing. <laughs> so as a child, I was like not even in kindergarten. Um, but so that was like a computer game that I was like, I need this, mm. but I don't have a computer that can play this game. Or also, I remember my mom not letting me have it because I don't think our computer could handle it and I didn't understand that at the time. Right, yeah, you um, just think you just put it in and play it, you know? <laughs> yeah, and I remember throwing tantrums, tantrums, full-on tantrums because I would want to play that game. I would have it in my hands at the store and I'm like, please! Like, I would be, I would be holding Sims online and we didn't even have internet at my mom's house. Like, my mom didn't get internet until I was, like, in high school and we got dial-up when, like, Ooh, yeah. my dad's house had not dial up what is it dsl but that's dick sucking lips so i'm not sure if that's the answer but <laughs> well, that's a whole different discussion yeah whatever it is yeah whatever it was like my dad's house had it my mom's house didn't and it took like until i was like either i'm pretty sure it was high school for her to get internet or like eighth grade like way late right okay um i don't know how um but yeah so 
one day my stepsister got a laptop, like a shitty fucking laptop where I have never seen anything since, but like you would open it up and the trackpad wasn't like the little thing there. It was like a little rolly thing. Like a bowl. And a and a button on the back of like the top part of the folding, like the monitor part, oh, okay. I guess. Never seen anything like it, but we played Sims on that and I could only play it on the weekend. So you were and then starved. They got, <laughs> I was starved. And then eventually they got like my sister and my stepsister because they were four years older. They got and they were in high school. So they were like, oh, we got to get the girls. So they got them that. And then ultimately I was able to play Sims 2 mm -hmm. um, at my dad's house. And then eventually I got Sims 2 at my mom's. And anyway, so that was why The Sims was like very important and pivotal for me. Okay. I was obsessed with The Sims. I feel like I was so obsessed with The Sims that like now. I play Sims 4, and I'm just like, I don't even know what to do anymore. <laughs> See, I'm kind of curious so, now, because I, I would usually ask questions from people at the end, but I had one from Rich, and it kind of ties in with what we're talking about. Okay. And he, he wanted to know, what was the turning point title or game in your life that made you, you know, say, I love gaming, and I'm hooked on this. So would Sims be that, that game for you? Uh, or is there something I else that had you hooked? It's hard because I would say there's a few, but yeah, I think Sims would be one of them. I loved Pokemon as a kid. Also, Animal Crossing, I would say, too, is a big, big deal. Because mm -hmm. um, I remember I had the GameCube and I pretty much played whatever my stepbrother played. Um, but this was the game that I don't know what it was, but I saw the box of it in the store and I just I looked at it. I read it. It kind of seemed like The Sims to me. Kind of. And... I was just like, I want this game. <laughs> and so I kept going back to the store and I would kept holding it and looking at it. I'm not sure. I think I was in middle school when Animal Crossing came out, like the first one. I I didn't honestly, I thought I I thought the one that came out recently was the first ever one, so that's my knowledge. Oh. Well, I'm sorry. That sounds like a <laughs> that sounds like a personal problem. Then, if you're just here, you go. <laughs> still haven't even played that one. Oh my god. Okay. Well, <laughs> I'm pretty sure I was like in middle school or something because had to be. I lived. My mom's house was like near a Target and like an EB Games. So it was like there was a highway that I had to cross, but like I could walk there and okay. I used to walk everywhere when I was a kid. I would walk to the grocery store. I would walk to Taco Bell. Mm -hmm. I would walk to Target. Um, I would walk to EB Games or GameStop, whatever it was. I don't know. I think it was everything, to be honest, at one point or another. Um, so I walked there, looked at the game, and I eventually came back and bought it when I saved up enough money to get it. <laughs> <laughs> right and that was and animal I, crossing or was that something and that else? was animal crossing and i again with same with sims like i would stay up all night playing it i mean i did with the tony hawk games too but like i had that game for every single like console and system that it came out on um and it was just like my own thing because my stepbrother didn't play it right um, okay and neither did my stepsister so it was just like my own game so it was your first was real awesome. game that only you played and mm -hmm. You could, mm -hmm. your full attention could go on it. Yeah. Yeah. And like, that's like the thing with Zelda and why I didn't play it until Breath of the Wild. Cause I always saw, I forget what it was. I don't know if it was for one of the Game Boys or whatever, um, or GameCube, mm. but I would always look at the box and I was like, Zelda, she's so pretty. Like, we had Mar, we had Super Smash Melee on the GameCube and I would always play Zelda. And I was like, she's so pretty. She's like Peach, but cooler. <laughs> um, but I never got Zelda because. I didn't know anyone that had it and I didn't know I think someone was like oh it's puzzles and for me I thought of like um not bejeweled but like something like that and I was yeah. like I hate those fucking games I hate puzzle games because you never had a, a a taster of playing it so you wouldn't have known really what to expect would you exactly so when I saw people when I saw Will playing what Coco Will whatever okay. um when I saw him playing Breath of the Wild on the Switch, I was like, oh, this game looks like something I would really like. And so I didn't get a Switch until like maybe a year and a half ago at this point. And so it took me a minute to play it, but glad I did. So okay. yeah, that's that's, cool. that's how it started and that's where we're going. It's, it's good to know <laughs> that the Animal Crossing trend has gone on for longer than I ever imagined that, to be yeah, honest. Yeah, yeah. Like, they tried it on like the Wii with, um, I don't even remember, City Folk? 
No, was that? I don't even remember. I've had it on everything. <laughs> it's You're like an there. Animal Crossing connoisseur. It's great. Uh, kind of, yeah, <laughs> yeah, I am. Because I didn't know you could time travel until like years into playing the first one. And the thing that was really eye-opening to me about it is because, again, I had it at my mom's house. And mm. when I would go to my dad's house every Saturday and Sunday, I never saw KK Slider. I never did turnips. You're like, what are you talking about? <laughs> so I was missing like big parts of the game. I was missing holidays. Like I missed so many things because I couldn't bring the game to my dad's. I mean, I guess I could have, but I didn't because everything was just so separate i had yeah. clothes at my dad's house i had clothes at my mom's house like i don't know i didn't think of it but when i discovered time traveling i was like holy shit it like changed the game for me mm -hmm. even more so um so now i time travel i know that's a very like touchy subject for people but i played the original game and i beat it i paid all my loans off Sorry, I was reading something. I paid off all my loans, got the fucking gold statue by the train station. I did that all without time traveling and using turnips. Yeah. So, and the stock market. So if I want to do that, because I want to make my island look nice, everyone can suck on my bean. Well, everyone plays any game that they play the way they want to at the end of the day. It's the way you enjoy it, isn't it? Exactly. There's just like a lot of like, just within my own friend group, people are, were you know pro time traveling anti time traveling <laughs> and i was just like it's not who real who fuck cares <laughs> who cares people on reddit and twitter they're like nintendo even said or whoever made the game don't time travel it's not intended that way and i'm just like it's, it's there and i'm using it <laughs> it's there i'm just trying to get all the furniture and unfortunately i don't want to wait 24 hours to see this the shop reset i'm impatient guys <laughs> no <laughs> i just want to design that's like and that's and and animal crossing new horizons is like where they made things like way more customizable because you weren't able to like make your island how you wanted to like you could right. just by like where you planted trees and flowers but like houses just spawned wherever they spawned there weren't really you could place bridges randomly i don't remember how or why you could add more bridges but it wasn't how it is now where there's like way more customization um and that yeah. comes a lot with modern day games as well don't they, they always add yeah. more to it mm -hmm. and i think too they added all like the crafting which i was at first very apprehensive of when i was hearing about it before the game released because um i never got happy home academy Mm -hmm. um i don't remember why i think it was on the wii u which i didn't get the wii u because the wii was i didn't have a good time with the wii um so i was kind of nervous how they were kind of combining happy home academy and whatever like the regular game but i think it worked out really well okay have you ever uh, tried speed running any game oh absolutely no way do you you don't think you ever would um, no. See, I don't do well under pressure. I also can't do things fast. Um, yeah, I don't think it's in the stars for me. No, no, I understand it. I think I'm the I same. I thought for half of a second I could maybe speedrun Mario Sunshine just because I've played that game so many times and beat it so many times. And I like play it every year, like even on my GameCube, like even before 3D All-Stars came out, mm -hmm. I plugged in my GameCube and I played it in March, like when COVID first, like was really bad and we were all in lockdown. Yeah. And yeah. You should try it. So I'd, I'd be intrigued to see you try a speed run at least once. I don't know. I don't even think I understand quite really what speed running is. I know it's like practicing like stuff and then it's just to like get stuff done quick. Yeah, I guess. it's just to beat and, times, isn't it? Really? Yeah, and I remember uh, hearing Commander say that he, you know, I too have a mental illness where <laughs> I can't just leave things behind. Yeah, you know, um, maybe not as bad as as Commander because I will never complete a Pokedex. I will never go shiny hunting. I will never do all the shrines in Breath of the Wild. I won't do that. I will yeah. finish the game. I will do as much end game stuff as my attention span can handle, but then it's time to move on. Yeah. So you, you're not you're not too OCD about it. Just just a smidge. No. Just yeah, but like I can't. 
yeah, like I can't leave any of the goop behind in Mario Sunshine. Like I won't. I have to clean it up, clean it all up, baby. <laughs> so I don't know. Oh, that's a sentence I didn't expect to hear you I say. I won't say never. I won't say never, but I don't think it's likely that I that you'll see me speed running because okay. I like it's not even just me wanting to complete every not everything, but like follow the not follow the rules, but like a certain path. Yeah, I like to follow the path for the most part. Um, but doing anything under pressure is like makes me just fuck up. Okay, so, so I'm gonna put you under pressure now though, so we'll see if you okay. fuck up. Um, can you do me an English accent? <laughs> an English, English accent. accent? Yeah. Okay. Everyone um, has to do it as part of the rules. I know. I was I was waiting for this, <laughs> but I actually forgot. Um, see, the thing is, um, I'm better at doing. I'm not good at doing accents. Number one. Number two. They they're they're better when I'm just doing it off the cuff. But now that you've asked me to, I feel under pressure. <laughs> okay, I'll make Do you, you a deal. Do you have like, something for me to say oh. that I could like read? Because coming saying something <laughs> off the top of my head is I'm just going to be like, hey, what, mate? Well, there is. You just did it. <laughs> okay, there, all right. Uh, that was a portion. Fact. That was a portion. All right, I'll, maybe I'll tell this story in, in a British accent. Is it... <laughs> I don't know why I'm stuck on this, but is it a British accent or English accent? All right, yeah, English accent. We'll be more specific okay. about it. Okay. Yeah. Well, okay. Because like, I don't know what region my what accent is. Cockney. I can tell you. I I know what that is. I like just don't Oliver know. Oliver Twist. I... <laughs> so I've never seen Oliver Twist, but oh. I know what that is. I know what it is. I've never seen it. I, I have an idea of what Cockney is. I just I don't know if I can do it. Okay. Like maybe a couple words. I think my accent's a blend of what I've heard. <laughs> we could always make um, a deal and like you could okay. just throw it in later on when you feel you're comfortable doing it, if that's easier. No, I'll tell the story that I was going <laughs> to tell that involves me speaking in an English accent. Okay, go for it. English. Okay. <clears throat> it might, I might go in and out. I'm getting nervous. You're putting me under pressure. I, like, I know. I like it. It's fun. <laughs> um... Oh God, how do I tell a story without having 5 million details that are unnecessary? Yeah. <laughs> Long story short, my company does a Christmas video every year for, for the holidays. That was like half Indian. Like half Indian. <laughs> anyway, we'll keep, going. we'll keep going. It's like I said, it's going to take me a minute to get into it. But hearing you talk helps. Okay. Um, That's good because I don't shut up. <laughs> Each of us, oh my God, I can't do it. Each of us had to um, write a script for a commercial, basically. And somebody, the people that were all working on the video for the year, this was not this past year, obviously, because of COVID, but the mm -hmm. year before, everyone that wrote a script was just reading their lines um, and just like called on other people to just like play a part. And one guy that I work with was, we were doing a parody of the Orbitz Gum commercial. Okay, you don't have Orbit's gum. <laughs> but um, so it's like, it's like dirty mouth, clean it up with Orbit's gum or whatever. You sound like Mary Poppins. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I was working from home that day. So I was taking the call from home and I was, um, I was doing work. I was actually doing work before I was bad. Um, oh, she did it. What? I mean, I could be doing better, but I'm still getting my job done. So I'm gonna send this if to your employees now. No. Is <laughs> he clapping over there? Anyway, um, he's just giving you applause. Well done, Coco. <laughs> um. So, anyways, I was just watching Drag Race UK. Like, I was watching the episode that I missed or whatever. So, I was listening to people speak in a in an english accent uh -huh. so i like had it in my brain and so some like my coworker was like okay lisa you you read the part of of alice so i was like oh, oh but i forget what the script was i wish i had it and i read it in an english accent and he was like okay you're gonna be casted as alice because you had a good accent and i think it was only good because i was just hearing people like screaming at each other in english accents for right. the hour before like becoming grained in you yeah kind of it was just like fresh in my mind so um yeah um i 
did a whole part and I had to keep saying lines in a British accent and it just was getting worse and worse. And then we played that video like in front of the whole office. It's <laughs> like, oh, you had a, such a good English accent. And I was like, I would honestly offend everyone. <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty offended right now. <clears throat> oh yeah, I'll try to slip it in at some point, but now I feel pressured. And it's gonna, <laughs> It's going to sound like Indian and like... <laughs> I don't know what it's gonna be something you've never heard before I don't know why I just take pleasure in pressuring people <laughs> no I do too okay so now you have, well give me your English I'll do accent. an English accent I mean, all right American, American. do my American, American accent yeah give me your American you know I'm gonna accent. do mayhem don't you right, well mayhem has like sort of like a almost I guess we'll call it a New England twang. I wouldn't call it a... I guess it's a little bit of a Boston accent, but it's not. She's very Southern in my head. Hi, guys. I'm Project Mayhem. And that's just how I hear her every time now. Oh, gosh. <laughs> yeah, she does sound like that. Moving swiftly on. What other okay. hobbies did you have growing up and maybe you've come into adulthood now? Okay. Growing up, the <laughs> highlights are I played soccer. Oh, did you? Uh, I did. I played soccer until about football. sixth grade. <clears throat> I played football. Sorry. <laughs> I forgot. I played soccer, football, whatever. Don't I did offend that. your host, Wiz. Sorry. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Sorry, mate. Sorry, mate. Um, I feel like when I'm reading stuff, I read things in a British accent. I feel like I'm thinking in a British <laughs> accent now because I'm watching so many like UK streamers. But anyway, I just can't get it to come out. What age did um, you play uh, soccer until? Soccer. I played soccer until. <laughs> I, uh, I played football until I was. Okay, what is that accent? It's Mary know. Poppins. No, I'm telling Mary you. Mary Poppins. I guess that my accent's a little more posh. Posh is. Pip pip. Um. Okay. So <laughs> soccer until about sixth grade my older stepsister she like some bitch like kicked her ankle and shattered it in a wow. soccer game so they were like all right no one's allowed to play soccer anymore um I, I think after that i tried out for the middle school soccer team and basically a ball got kicked and smacked me in the head and i was like all right <laughs> that's that that's not for me <laughs> um but i also in like fifth grade or something, I started dance. I danced until uh, all through high school. Okay. And then in high school, not in high school, after I graduated, I started snowboarding. So that's kind of something I still do. Um, I learned to snowboard when I was 18 or something. Mm -hmm. um, Yeeting yourself down yeah. mountains, yep. Yeah, and then obviously video games. Um, <laughs> I was really into like Yu-Gi-Oh cards, magic cards. Um, I was like into some anime in high school, but I revisited it more as an adult. I've taken, I've been really bad at watching anything this year. Right. I don't know why. Despite all the time you have. <laughs> yeah, I just, I just, I don't know. I feel like because... <clears throat> I'm such a social person. I've been really into Twitch and like interacting with people more than yeah. like watching TV shows because I just find it boring. No, I get like, you. Just the idea of it. But yeah, so yeah, soccer, dance, snowboarding. Um, I like, I do like to lift weights. I like weight training. I've taken a few months off recently, but um, ever since I was like 21. I was really into like going to the gym, yep. like lifting weights, seeing how much I could get stronger um, and all those kind of things. So I was really into that. Not cardio. No, just weightlifting. Mm -hmm. Cardio sucks. Yeah. So I've just been kind of struggling with weightlifting right now just for a lot of obvious reasons. I don't want to go to a gym right now. Some of them are open. I think they're closed again, but they were open briefly and I was like, nah, I'm not yeah sounds, no uh, i get it <laughs> and it's... So i'm just kind of like waiting not not waiting like i have my little three sets of baby weights and some resistance bands that are getting me through until it's safe to go back to the gym but mm -hmm. just to tide you over until it gets back to normal yeah so i i, I have a very small food question because obviously i don't talk about food much i'm not much of a you know 
fucking cook or any shit like that. So me neither. I despise cooking. <laughs> I so that's that's good. We could both keep it simple on this one. All right. What's your favorite pizza <laughs> topping? Don't say pineapple. If we're doing toppings, I like buffalo chicken. Okay. But it depends on the place. Yep. Um, Philadelphia does not have good pizza. So the one good pizza place we found closed up literally a year ago. I think they knew something was happening. I think they knew COVID was was coming and they said we're done we're not gonna make it through it anyway (laughs) yeah like literally january 1st they were done right i was like what the fuck but they had the best buffalo chicken pizza in philly i don't know i don't know a lot of buffalo i don't know a lot of pizza places in philly but every one i go to is just like so if if you were to go to uh, a new place you would if they had that you would try it that would be the first your first (laughs) First thing I do is I get a plate. If a, if their plain pizza is garbage, I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear what else they. I don't. Want, that's it. If you can't make a plain pizza, fuck off. I assume but you yeah. just mean like a cheese pizza. Is yeah. That- so typically that's that's my topping of choice. I wasn't like an. It wasn't until I was like an adult is when I had buffalo chicken on my pizza. Right. Okay. You branched out. You're less. You're more exciting now with your buffalo chicken. I'm a little more exciting. Not yeah. just just a bit of cheese on top. Yeah, but yeah, I'm 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 kind of plain with things sometimes. It's weird, but I'm either plain or spicy. Like that's it. Oh, there's no in between. No. <laughs> See if for no taste or burn your mouth off. <laughs> yep, love it. Yeah, that's that's me. So yeah, I've never had pineapple pizza. I think you don't like it. Is that what it is? I don't think it belongs on pizza. Okay. I, I, I understand the argument of it being like good. I have never had it. I don't I won't I don't think I would purchase a whole pineapple pizza for myself. No. But if I was at a party and I was hungry and they were like, We have pizza, but all there's left is pineapple pizza, I may try it. You just pick the pineapple off. It's fine. Yeah. I may try it. If it's not good, that's it. At least you try stuff. That's the thing, isn't it? I used to not. So yeah, sometimes I'll try stuff. Sometimes. That's all right. I'm incredibly picky, so I understand that. I used to be very, very picky, but I've tried to broaden my horizons a little bit as an adult. You do as you get older a little bit, don't you? Mm-hmm. I still won't fuck with quiche, though. Quiche could... <laughs> no, I hate quiche. She it's don't disgusting. fuck with quiche. <laughs> do you want to be put under more pressure? Okay. Should we move on to the top freeze? Because oh, I know that you're like really dreaded. excited for the top freeze. Hey. All right, this is where everyone's going to find out how boring I am. <laughs> I'm ready. So we will start with top three films. Okay. Uh, so I don't watch a lot of movies. Oh. Um, I used to work at a movie theater for four years, so whatever came out in that time frame, I've I've probably seen. Um, and I was thinking about this a lot. Like, what would my top three movies be? They're not going to be the most. Hey, this is the good thing that I like about these questions is everyone's different and it's a personal thing. Yeah, I feel like I have to say something super like, I love Lord of the Rings, I love Star Wars. That's what <laughs> I've, you, never you... Seen. I've seen Lord of the Ring. I've never seen a Star War. Um, what about Moon Wars? I don't, I don't see Moon War either. Um, it's not a real thing, that's why. I know. <laughs> um... <laughs> One movie that stands out to me is American Beauty, but like fuck Kevin Spacey. So <laughs> I don't know what that film is. Oh, it's really good. It's it's really good. Um, I'm not really into chick flicks like that. Sometimes I like those kind of movies, chick flicks or romantic comedies. I'm not really into them that much. Like when I saw The Notebook, I was like, Ugh, yeah, I hate all of this. Um. I was when I was thinking about what I would say. Oh shoot! I never actually looked up the name of that movie. I'm having a brain fart. Okay, oh, was there one that you had in mind that? There's one that I, I that I really liked. I saw it when I was younger, and I I watch it every now and then. And when I see it, it makes me cry. Okay. Um, it is a rom com. I think it's better than The Notebook, in my opinion, just because. Oh. Um. I'm kind of curious to know what it is now. I know who's in it, but 
Uh, who's in it? Tell us who's in it while you're looking. Ashton, I'm really bad at actors and actresses, but there's like <laughs> seven. There's seven that I know, and these are two of the seven. Um, a lot like Love with Ashton Kutcher and Amanda Peet. Okay. I don't know why I liked that movie so much, but like I think I saw it like three times when it was in the theaters, and then I think I watched it. I made Will watch it one time with me when we were first dating, and I was like. <laughs> <laughs> Like I, I cried when 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 Ash left Pikachu, and I cried for this movie, <laughs> and that's it. So if you got, we got American Beauty, and what was that film just called? A lot like love. A lot like love. Okay. And then I have to pick a comedy. Okay. Because I like funny movies. Like I, when I watch something, I just want to laugh. Like I yeah. don't want. To, I don't. I like serious things. There are like some other serious movies that I really like that I can't think of right now because. I haven't seen a movie like all year probably. That's kind of a lie, but Yeah, I mean as someone who doesn't watch many, I, I can totally understand. Yeah, I just feel like my attention span can't handle it. I'm just like, I gotta move. I can't You gotta I'd be doing play, something. I'd rather play a game because yeah. I'm doing something. I can't just sit there and watch something. Yeah. Um I mean but then the comedy Plenty of good comedies to choose from, that's for sure. Mm-hmm. I think it's torn between two, and I'm not sure why. I guess just two that like really made me laugh the most, um, and that's gonna be super bad and forty year old virgin. Okay, no, yeah, the good choices. So, yeah, those are like, I love those movies, especially forty year old virgin. That's a very good film. Yeah, I just have this thing with Steve Carell. Like, my dad looks just like him. So, I mean, <laughs> that sounds weird. <laughs> I didn't realize that until someone was like, Lisa, your dad looks like Steve Carell. And I was like, holy shit. That's no bad yeah. thing either. I'd love to look like Steve Carell. It'd be great. Yeah. I mean, he looks a little different. More older. Doesn't use probably as nice of skincare or any of that. <laughs> but you can see the resemblance. <laughs> okay. So if that's your top three films. Yeah, top three and a half. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> I'll let you have it. It's fine. Mudge picked like okay. a whole fucking trilogy when he did his. Yeah. So yeah, give me, <laughs> give me that. I can't decide between those two. So if we move on to band slash artists. Oh, that's going to be opening a whole can of worms. Oh, fuck me. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know. I'm kind of a, I'm kind of a music snob. Will hates my music and that's okay. He's into what he's into and I'm into what I'm into. Yep. Um, it's another personal thing in it, really. But I'm my taste in music is so all over the place that it's hard for me to give one one answer because it just depends on what I'm listening to in the moment. And then there's stuff that I always go back to. Would it be easier to name like a top three genres instead? No, because I'm <laughs> I like am so annoying that I'm like, it's kinda like this but it's a little bit of this influence and you're gonna be like what are you talking about um so here we go and one one artist that i really really liked consistently for years that i would always say is now canceled so it's kind of oh. hard for me to like know now what what to what to say but who is that out of curiosity uh it was bass nectar oh i don't know who that is Okay. So. <laughs> um that's fine so i feel like when i i feel like recently my i like my the music that i listen to is mellowed out a lot more but growing up i was really into like metal and like alternative and like rock music but like not like your classic metal stuff because i don't know my parents didn't listen to that so i didn't really get introduced to it yeah. and now i'm not that I don't appreciate older music and movies and things, but like it just has to be force fed to me. Because if it's like, I don't know, I don't want to say if it's old, I don't care about it. But like, and I I understand the importance of like earlier artists, but I don't know. I was just really into like that like death metal kind of stuff in high school. Um, I had like the black hair, like the skinny jeans, like the studded belts and like the band t-shirts and all that stuff so i was really mm -hmm. into that um so some artists from there that i was really into was um i really bring me the horizon is was something that i was really interested in now they're kind of lame 
also a day to remember i really liked things like that okay um um why am i blanking crimson armada was a really really good band and miss may i those are like the ones that i really like that kind of sound i'm trying to nod um, along as if i know who they are it's fine yeah and they're like all different i don't know what their technical genres are i think i remember crimson armada was like tech metal i think which okay. like what um I, yeah so i was like i can't do genres because you're gonna be like <laughs> excuse me we had a well i mean you had a fair few bands and artists but i don't i don't reckon you can condense them into a top three can you i, I can't because there, there there's that piece of me that's into that and then there's i'm as of late i always liked i hate calling it electric dance music or electronic music but i guess that's what it is mm -hmm. like as a whole um so I know that kind of stuff started to become really popular in the 90s. I was a little baby pooping my pants. So um, I wasn't really there for the, the first wave of that when like music was being digitalized and sounds were being created with like digital things. Yeah. It's very like, digital things. Very high level explanation <laughs> yeah. of all that. But I I'm really it. great with words. <laughs> Especially when I'm speaking words, I'm better at writing words. And I'm yeah. not even good at writing words. But anyway. You're doing fine. Thanks. So my like for like heavier, like metal music kind of transitioned into dubstep, if you will, which at first I was like, what? Like I was earlier in high school, I started listening to it. And it was when people either didn't know what it was mm -hmm. Or they were like, oh, that like robot beep boop bop music and like just totally didn't get it or appreciate it. Yeah. Um, which I I get it. I get it. It kind of sounds weird to people that don't get it. But if you think of each sound as like an instrument or like that somebody put those sounds together and yeah. layered them together to create something that is pleasing to someone. Like, if you think of it, like, Mozart was just not necessarily banging on a piano, but, like, he was, you know, using bits the together. piano to put things together to create a sound. Yeah. And that's what I kind of see with dubstep and electronic music um, in general. There's a lot of um, creativity to it. Yeah, and I think it's easy to, to listen to it um, at first and and think like what the fuck is this and some some genres of electronic music is that to me like i'm not into hard style that is just too chaotic for me mm -hmm. um i don't some i'm not really into like house stuff which is like i don't know i call it like your bro house like your college frat bro shit like i'm not into that maybe some stuff i will be into like some top 40 stuff i'll be into mm -hmm. See, I'm really like a hipster and snobby. <laughs> I don't even these days. I don't even know what falls under what category anymore. To be honest, because it all <laughs> know, just like, melts together to me. Yeah, like I now I always called this one style that I've been really into recently deep house, but now I'm finding out. I think people call it um, night bass, and I'm like, okay, people just but making was, shit up now. I swear. Yeah, but just. I guess so all those artists before now I'm really into um like Young Bay is more funky like um Flamingo Sis is really great um depending on my my mood mm -hmm. um and then I'm really into like Roosevelt who's more poppy but has a little it's like electronic pop I would say okay and then there's another artist that's st sticking out to me that I discovered recently there's um Dombreski um jay wara who's she, i literally just discovered her last weekend but she's like a female like it's not a dj but i guess a producer and i think in a very i mean obviously everything's very male dom dominated but her and rez rez is more like on the dubstep like heavier sound okay um but i think they do a really great job um standing out in their genres um in the music industry sure. um and who was the other one that i was going to say i'm really into grizz 
Grizz was like up there with Bass Nectar for a while, um, and now that Bass Nectar is cancelled, I'm starting to realize I'm really not down with the kids, to be honest, because I don't know what any of this is. I'm starting to feel that way <laughs> in that kind of music as well. Um, so I hear you, I get you, but don't feel any kind of way because I listen to weird fucking music. I'm such like, a boomer. <clears throat> no, you're honestly you're fine. I'll talk to people my age, and they're like, I don't know what you're talking about. But that's so, that's the beauty of music, is it, it, it can be anything, can't it? It can be as unique as you like. That's yeah. It's, there's so much out there. But there's there's so much music that sometimes it's overwhelming, and I feel like this year I didn't. I'm really into going to like live music shows. Uh, I guess is that a hobby? Um, yeah, that can yeah. count as a hobby. Yeah. I haven't done that at all this year, obviously, so I forgot about it. But I'm really into going to see music. Um, that's like one of the main reasons why I was considering moving to Philadelphia um, because it has a big music scene. Right. In the two genres that I'm really in the two overarching genres that I'm really into. Right. So um, there's a lot of like small gigs that we'll see. Like it'll be like ten people um in a room with like the band up there like i saw um well real estate is also canceled but um that was a bigger show but who opened for um real estate was little tybee and that's like a i don't even know what genre that that is that's none of the two that i was really talking about but my music's all over the place i don't like country i'm really not into rap and hip-hop and like oh, okay. R&B kind of stuff right i don't know why it's just it's Rap, I don't like it because a lot of times it's very, um, I just don't like some of the messages that are like about women and how they portray women in them. Yeah. So I'm I'm not into that. Um, I I'm understand not, the country thing because like it's just crap. Yeah, I feel like, <laughs> yeah, country is disgusting. And now my sister all of a sudden is into country and I'm like, who the fuck are you? <laughs> My sister used to listen to explicitly so show tunes, so I guess she's actually not that show tunes aren't real music, but like, are you really gonna drive in your car listening to <laughs> he had it he had it coming from Chicago? Like, are you really gonna do that? Hey, everyone's got their interests. Are you really gonna be listening to the entire like? Is it a soundtrack of the of the drowsy chaperone? Like, are you gonna do that? Like, what? Anyway. So she can listen to country. That's cool. And like R and B, sorry, it's just too fucking slow for me. I'm not into it. It's too slow. I get it. I like mean, baby making music, like no, that does not. Maybe like, making music. <laughs> that's what call it. I don't think I've ever used it for that. To be honest with you, but you know, some people do. I don't know. Each to their own, mate. Yeah, but I feel like now I'm more into like disco, city pop. Um, night bass um and like chill wave synth wave so like all that kind of stuff is what i'm i'm into now okay so i'm gonna music be music is hard there's no top three there's really no i'm gonna be kind to you and and let you okay. off from choosing the top three because you went so into detail about what you do like well music is a different story i'm like really into music and it's really hard for me to pick three but okay you, we can try we can try again for the next one well i mean do you read much <laughs> Um, honestly, no. But I'll take that I little laugh as a note. <laughs> I don't, but I knew you were going to ask me this, so I tried to be prepared with the response. Well, we can totally gloss out because these are just general questions, and if someone isn't interested in one of the things, okay. like I asked someone... Do textbooks count as books that I like to read? Do you like to read them? I did. <laughs> I just... Now that school is over, I don't really have much to read. I am I, My goal this year in 2020 was to read a book. Oh, okay. You didn't do it. Uh, I have about <laughs> a few hours left to complete that goal. And I'm it, probably Missy. on page like 50. So, But I have a good book that I'm really into. I did get it towards the end and I was supposed to read it while I was traveling, but then COVID. So. Okay. We'll, we'll, yeah. we'll skip over books. Okay. I interviewed someone once that didn't watch films, didn't listen to music. So, you know, it, you're you not the worst that. person. Okay, I really was like, people are going to fucking hate me. They're like, this bitch doesn't read. This bitch doesn't like music. <laughs> what does she this do? Uncultured, this uncultured <laughs> little bitch. And I'm just like, you know what, guys? Chill. That's not me. Yeah, just chill. I'm interested in other things. Chill, Coco. Fuck's yeah. sake. Yeah, he did that stuff for me. So, I mean, I don't even think he re reads. But he read Lord of the Rings, so I guess he's he's fine. 
oh, is okay. accepted in society. Yeah, that probably took about three years. Yeah. Um, so we're moving. You'll be able to do this one, I hope. Um, top three games. And you can be a cop out like Mudge if you'd like, if there's one option that's maybe like a series of games. I'll, I'll allow it. I'll say for sure Animal Crossing. I feel pretty confident in, in saying that because that's been something that's been consistent my whole life. Mm -hmm. um, I also want to say Stardew Valley. Ooh, okay. Because um, that was like a game recently, like as an adult that like, outside of animal crossing and pokemon that like kind of brought me back into gaming as an adult because i took a little break i would say like i still played pokemon and like every game that came out i played that um but i just play it to completion like again i'm not into the shiny hunting and and completing my pokedex so i don't want to say pokemon yeah again that's something i've played my whole life too and i'll continue to play it but you wouldn't have it as a top three necessarily it's up there, but no. Yeah. Um, I don't want to say Sims because I'm not really interested in The Sims as much as I was, but it was a big deal for me. DVD? I don't want to say DVD <laughs> either because I don't know if this is a phase. It's just a phase, mom. Oh. Like, I don't know. I don't know. So, DVD. <laughs> Have you been playing it's it important. long enough for it to be a top three? I started playing it in like september mm. so i don't I, I don't think i played it long enough to really know yet yeah. um however it's important in the sense that it's like the it's it's different mm. it's it's really different for me because i not that i don't like horror movies and stuff like i just find it corny yep to be honest like i would watch scary movies and stuff here and there, but I always laugh at them. Like, you don't want to take me to a scary movie release in the movies because I will straight up laugh. <laughs> I laughed during it when he was doing the little, like, <laughs> dance. I was pissing my pants in the theater and everyone was, like, so mad at me. Um, to be fair, I it's not laughed. a scary film at all, so I'll let yeah, you know. Yeah, well, maybe that was a bad example, but, like, most of the time, like, jumpy things, yes. I get jump scared very easily. My roommates just breathing scare the shit out of me. Like, they'll come up <laughs> behind me and I'll be like, <gasps> Like I was shoveling snow, like when it snowed the other week, mm -hmm. and my roommate just set out. He opened the door and said, "Thanks for doing that." And I <laughs> screamed like somebody was holding a gun to my head. <laughs> so anyway, um, so thriller things, yeah, they'll make me jump, but I'll, and scary things, but I think it's corny. So, anyways, DVD is is an honorable mention, if you will, because okay. it's my first like scary game that i've ever played um i really wanted to play resident evil for like in october for like halloween but i didn't get my pc built in time so i think i might save that for maybe next october maybe we'll we'll, we'll dive in before then but i'm at least open to trying mm -hmm. other scary games now at this point and okay. i wasn't before i honestly didn't think i was gonna like dvd so, Animal Crossing, Stardew. Okay, right, an actual third one. Um, yeah, I'm not letting you off this one. I feel like I'm forgetting something. I mean, you've named the, the main ones that you spoke about earlier. Yeah, I also have commitment issues, so I'm like afraid to commit to a certain <laughs> thing. Because I feel like I'm forgetting about something that I like more. Um, that's really it. Um, I'm kind of surprised you wouldn't put Sims in there. A little bit. I guess, I guess because I'm frustrated with the Sims right now. Like, I don't know how to build a house anymore. It's so goddamn complicated. And yeah. that was my favorite part. Um. But it had a big impact on your life. When you were yeah, younger. I, I guess. We'll go with The Sims. We can go with The Sims. I'm like... If you can't really think of like, it anymore. Yeah, like, I feel like I can't say Zelda yet because I've only played Breath of the Wild. Um, I want to say GTA, but I've never played it, like, that much. Like, I really only played uh, GTA 5 um, to, to completion because 
yeah, I had a month off between working at Sephora and working at Mac and mm. Will had it. So I basically just like camped at his parents' house for a month, like in his room playing GTA. And everyone was like, oh, Will, you're online? Let's play games. <laughs> and he's like, no, that's Lisa playing on my PlayStation. Um, so I think, I think that the top threes are generally like a matter of how much enjoyment you got out of them as well. I think. Okay. I mean... Um, well, I, I kind of want to group together like GTA, true crime, and like Cy uh, Red Dead 2. I didn't play the first one. And like Cyberpunk, like those kind of games. Like I want to put... Put a genre like, in the RPG kind of... Sh yeah. Yeah. I'm not into shooty games. Like, so when like, you know, when Red Dead and all those games get into the shooty parts, like... I, I, I'm big sweaty, I'm big, big sweaty during those parts, but, um, I eventually learn once I get the handle, the hang of it, but, um, I do like those kind of games. I really like open world games where you can just kind of do your own thing. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so in general, those are the kind of games that I like. I'll, I'll let you off cause you did at least do a top two and then okay. obviously the, the third I'll allow yeah, sort I of a genre. Okay. We can say we can say Sims or we can say Pokemon, I guess. Oh fuck! I'm sorry. <laughs> Mario Sunshine. Fuck. Oh Jesus Christ. Yeah. I don't, see, I'm forgetting something. I don't want to. <laughs> yeah. There's many reasons. Um, one of which, if you if you're a real one, you know, I don't want to dox myself, but um, there's like a personal reason, and I could tell you afterwards. I don't I don't care if you I don't care if you know, but okay. um. um yeah other than that personal tie to it um there's i just love that game like even today like it still looks really good yeah like even on the gamecube like i just think that game was like ahead of its time in, in a way just in terms of like like the graphics like i really think nintendo outdid themselves with it and yeah. maybe i'm big dumb and i don't know all the, all the shit about video games that uh, i, I think know. a lot of their games aged very well just because of the way they were made yeah, but I think that's a big one. Like Mario 64 did not age well at all, but I think at the time that was a really big deal and I and I see that and they worked on it with 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 Sunshine. Yeah. Um but I I really liked that game. I think I mean, I still play it. I mean, I didn't finish it on stream. But I will pick it up again and again, and I know that. Okay. Also Adventure 2 Battle sonic is is an, is another honorable mention because i i really liked that and i was really into chow world okay that's cool we secured a top three gg swiz you did well yes i'm sorry 20 minutes two hours and 45 minutes later we have, we have a top three. <laughs> it's a new year now isn't it um not for me yet oh no. my god i can't believe this only in australia and around that sort of area yeah so if we move on to what we are all here for is uh, streaming on Twitch. Mm -hmm. So all of these general questions will be about experiences on Twitch and all of that jazz. Okay. I threw a new question in for you. Um, okay. I'd like to know about your point redemptions because you have a particular point redemption. And if okay. nobody has seen Wiz's stream... I'm not sure which one you're referring to, but go ahead. Maybe there's I know. There's one particular one for me that sticks out. Uh, okay. There's one particular one where she has um, a redemption where if you redeem it, she will stick a piece of tape on her like nose attached to her forehead so that it's like that for about 10 minutes. And I want to know why, how, why did you come up with that? <laughs> Here we go. That, oh no! That, gonna, that's on. that's at least an idea of what what the redemption is. It actually has a story. <laughs> okay. Um, and I have told it on stream, I think. Um, <laughs> but for those that missed it, and let me just give everyone the full. This this is. I feel like when I have my makeup on, my nose is a little bit more slippery. So you really gotta like, <laughs> and it's hard now with all the all the nose bling. <laughs> as well because i didn't have it when this first was a thing i mean i hope everyone appreciates this this is a monumental moment in getting to know and you series know what? it's crazy that it's that this turned into such a icon is it an iconic i don't I, know yeah but i mean I certainly in your stream all right we'll go with that an iconic channel point redemption 
Um, okay, how did this start? So um, in about fifth grade or something, I think it was, um, I had a friend, Brianna, she's still one of, I'm not as close with her as I was when I was growing up and in high school and stuff, but she's still someone that I talk to. Um, she actually recently moved to Philly with another um, elementary school friend. Um, so I'm excited that, that once all this stuff is over to see her, but mm -hmm. Her and my other friend, Jackie, that moved to Philly, they both lived within walking distance of me. So like I said, we, we would just walk to each other's houses, walk to the store to walk around, all that kind of stuff. So we would we were really close. Um, I got a video camera for Christmas one year or my birthday, I forget. And I was really into filming things. I'm not now. Uh -huh. I guess this I guess this is kind of like coming back in a little bit of a full circle because I'm streaming, but I never really thought about it. Anyway, got a digital camera, mm -hmm. really wanted to record stuff. I don't know, I don't know who I don't know why. I have no fucking idea why, because if we were to find those tapes at my mom's house and she's a hoarder, so they probably still exist in the attic. <laughs> or or in my closet of my room, my old room. I don't know. They're probably there. And those should all be burned. But I would just record the craziest shit. I had a huge imagination and we'll just, we'll just stop it there. But <laughs> my friend would come over and we would just film ourselves doing whatever. We would like play a game and film ourselves and we would do talk shows. Right. One of them was the Britney Britney show. So we thought we both looked so funny with our noses up. And we were like, I'm Brittany, I'm Brittany. And just like, we're holding our noses up and like trying to talk like that. And we were like, oh, what if we just taped our noses up? Also, she had a really squishy nose. She could like <laughs> squish her nose to her cheek. Right. And it was like, crazy. like she had no cartilage in her nose. Um, whereas my nose is a little bit more bony. Yeah. Um, so anyways, we were so smart and we're like, let's just tape our noses up. Then we don't have to hold it. So there's like hours of footage of us just with our noses taped up, like just being fucking goofballs, like pretending to interview each other. I don't remember any specifics other than it's Britney. I couldn't call the Channel Point Redemption Britney Britney show because nobody would know what that means because no. that that is just between me and Brianna. I think she would find it really funny if she knew that I did that. But um. Yeah, so one day I was working out virtually with Choco and Moon, and I don't remember why, but I just, like, stuck my nose up for whatever reason. I was just feeling feeling the endorphins after <laughs> working out, and I just was, like, being a goof, and, and it's just something I always do. I, like, stick my nose up for, like, a silly face. When I got braces in high school, I learned that I could, like, curl. I, I can't do it with the tape. I would like curl my note, my lip up like this because it would rest on my braces. Yeah. And I used to like do this like crazy little face. <laughs> Actually, there's a good picture that I can I can send you, but I'll send it to you. I'll find it as I talk. I'll try to okay. ask here. But anyways, that's how it started. And then I saw I was like, you know what? This should be like a channel point redemption. Like, I don't know. It's stupid, but like, it's funny. I think like people might think it's funny. Um, and, and then and so you have it. That's OK. I mean, that's, what it is. that's the reason I asked, because I figured there'd be some story behind it and you didn't just yeah. randomly one day decide to do it. <laughs> yeah, but I was like, what do I do for Channel Point Redemptions? Like, it's it's hard because it's like, I mean, at the end of the day, streaming, it's it's kind of a business, right? Like, I mean, yeah, it's fun and you can take it, anyone takes it more or less seriously. Mm -hmm. But um, at the end of the day, like, you know, you want to mobilize people into doing certain things. And so obviously the monetary things, that's a little bit more easier, but like getting people to use your channel points or even care about your channel yeah. points, even care about watching you because gifting a sub is one thing. Um, you know, cheering bits is another, but like, how are people going to want to get those points and use them? Yeah. Um, I don't have the whole answer. I think, you know, I'm in time I'll work on it, but I think this was something that I came up with that it's an in, an incentive <laughs> of, this of is sorts. something that yeah, this is something I came up with that was just so stupid. I don't know. Um 
And I guess it works. Yeah. I guess it works. I'd say um, so. So. And I mean, it's like that it's, sort of thing is. People don't think about it and it's yeah. unique, I guess. And I'm just like, whoa, I didn't even think of it to be a thing. Yeah. And then it's turned out to be something that people will actually. They want to hang out in your stream to earn the points to make you fucking stick your nose up. <laughs> mm-hmm. Do you yep. know what I mean? Like, it's incentive for people to hang out more. And like you say, it's. Yeah. And like. I think it's funny and it's not something I mind doing, but sometimes just stopping and doing it and then like not being able to talk as well. And then like, not that I care that much because I'm a goofball, but like Mm. sometimes if that's someone's first experience in my stream, (laughs) I'm not always sure how that's going to go. So now it's like people want to do it to piss me off not piss me off i don't get mad like that but like you know what i mean to like for an example interrupt in today, to of. interrupt exactly yeah. and i guess that's like kind of some the point for a lot of channel redemption like things like playing with your controller upside down blindfolded yeah some of the silly ones that you have um don't know what you talk about <laughs> So, but yeah, even like Mono, for an example, today is like, Wiz, I'm saving up. I'm going to tape your nose up. I'm just waiting for the right moment. So I think, you know, I'm on the right track with them. Um, yeah. No, I agree. Things. Another I think- thing I actually am quite curious about you and your stream um, yeah. is your name. How did you come up with your username? Because um, there's, there's, a, there's a rapper or artist or something. Yes. Similar so- name, right? And as I said, I don't listen to like rap and stuff. So like, I don't know any Wiz Khalifa songs. So <laughs> I kind of feel like a, a fraud. Okay, first of all, <laughs> we talked about this, that me with the, with the face, with the, with the lip over my teeth. I found the picture. Okay. Um, I'll send it to you. If you say, I might have it flash up on screen. It. Yeah. When it, yeah, when so people can see it better, but, um, <laughs> oh, okay i don't know how to do this okay there we go that doesn't even look like you <laughs> well okay well first of all i was like a junior in high school i was 17 uh i had black hair and i was like i think i want to go blonde um so my friend um and i were just bleaching my hair and she was like oh yeah we like sometimes use foil because she would get her hair light like professionally lightened in some spots so she like kind of knew yeah. how to do it but like not actually so she was like, oh, we need to keep the heat in. So we need to make like a, like a cap. So that was, it's a funny picture. Uh, but I, it, well, it was not funny was how bad I ruined my hair. I literally looked like Garth. <laughs> oh, God. From, I looked like Garth from Wayne's World. Uh, when I took, when I rinsed out my hair, my hair was orange. It was breaking. It was, it was a disaster. And I literally had my first panic attack. Right. Anyway um but it's funny that face is funny and that's like the one picture of of it where it's like with the little hat the little helmet that me and my friend megan talk about who was there with me when i was dying it but anyway um what was the question uh, the username username okay i didn't come up with it actually i may have a picture of the night that it actually no i'm not going to show you that because that's going to be very defaming on my part. <laughs> um Actually, this whole story is going to be very defaming, but I don't think it's a secret. It was actually the the the, the weekend that I learned how to snowboard. Um, my friend Jackie, who I mentioned before, that was friend. I used to walk to her house and all that stuff. I used to dance with her. Mm-hmm. Um, her boyfriend at the time, they had a mountain house in like upstate New York, and we drove there for the weekend. Obviously, anyways, point is. We were just drinking and partying and stuff like that. This was after high school because I didn't do anything until after high school. Doing anything, meaning go to parties, drink alcohol. I tried it like when I was 15 and then didn't until I, after I graduated, essentially, or end of senior year. Yeah. Um, and um, I also didn't smoke weed until after high school. Um, I found out my mom smoked weed when I was in sixth grade and like my life was shattered. So I was like don't do drugs uh (laughs) anyway anyway um so we were just hanging out drinking outside in the snow and somebody had a grav bong which is a bong where you use water like when you i forget you like i haven't smoked out of one in a long time but basically you like pull it up you like light the 
bowl or whatever. And then when you pull it up, that's what like pulls the air through to right. get the smoke. And then you like kind of when you when you inhale it, you like push it back down into the water. Otherwise you're gonna like, I don't know what happens, suck up water and that's not what you want to do. Yeah. Um anyways, so I don't know. I just like took a few large bong rip as I do and these Friends started calling me Wiz Khalisa on the weekend. <laughs> and I was like, you know what? I kind of like that. And this was like 2012. Okay. Um, so I kind of made it this that's like kind of when like I had a Twitter, but it was just like my name. Um, so I think I changed I made an Instagram and I think I don't know what it started off as, but eventually it was Wiz Khalisa. Um I tried every A until it allowed me to do it. And I wondered why all the A's appeared. (laughs) That's how all the A's happened. But I also wanted it to be like a number that made sense. So I would remember it too. So I was like, one, two is kind of weird, even though it's an even number. Three makes sense. Four is also weird, but five made sense. Yeah. Um, And for a while. Yeah. Like I, so I don't, I don't quite have my Instagram, like my Instagram is was Kalisa. Please don't follow me unless I know you. Um, Cause it's my personal one. I'm in the, I'm thinking about creating a, a Twitch or a streaming Instagram. Um, mm-hmm. But I have some thoughts about that like officially, but yeah. So because that was my like social media handle in general, like when I made my Twitch account, I don't know what year it was because when I looked it up, it was way recent than I thought. So maybe I had an old one with less A's and I don't remember the password for it, but yeah, I just, because all of my social media was with Kalisa, my Twitch just already was. Just makes I didn't sense. Stream. I didn't stream for a while. And really the only thing I did was just, I think my Twitter or something had four A's. So I made it five. I like did a few little adjustments so that they're all the five A's. Yeah. Um, And so like, I kind of already branded myself in that way unintentionally. And it mm. just kind of, I'm just kind of keeping it that way. Okay. Um, But that's the story of how it happened. I'm really precise and concise with my storytelling here. No, I mean, <laughs> and it's nice to hear sort of when usernames were created in a just when you're out of your friends it's like not something you've just come up with for streaming it's it's a personal thing yeah and then i didn't think about it too much but like now whenever i follow people everyone's like wiz kalisa i love that name and i'm like all right sick like if it's <laughs> memorable like cool i can't take credit for coming up with it um i also was back in the day i was torn between stona lisa <laughs> like mona lisa yeah but yeah, you get, you get it. But I didn't, I don't like to, this is, a, I'm asking myself a question, I guess. I'm going to ask myself, whatever. All right, don't you don't really need like, me, I'll see you later. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like to identify as a stoner, but I guess I am. <laughs> okay. I don't like to say that. I guess because of how I grew up, like, all that kind of stuff was, um, I mean, it's taboo in general, but I was brought up to be like afraid of all that stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, I won't go into too many savvy details, but, um, even in high school, like the way that I dressed and stuff, like I had my nose pierced and all that stuff and people thought that I smoked weed. Right. And I was like, I don't. Um, so I'm, I'm always just, I always, don't want to be what people think I am. So I think that's why Stone Elisa didn't stick because I didn't want to be like labeled as a stoner. I get I it. I don't see yeah. myself that way. Yeah. yeah. You're not a proper stoner. <laughs> I mean, I guess. What is a proper stoner? I don't like, fucking what, know. <laughs> like, what is your three things that stoners do? Smoke weed every day. Smoke weed every day. Um... <laughs> I was waiting for that bit. I think that's literally what you a stoner i guess and hey i smoke weed every day but mostly just to go to sleep you just you just don't um like to name yourself as that like i don't like labels labels that's what i was thinking of (laughs) don't like like labels i don't (laughs) so you say you were uh you were on twitch for a while before you started streaming so you were obviously Mm -hmm. watching people what no 
Oh, you just had a Twitch. Yeah, my uh, <laughs> shout out DJ Tyler Valentine. Um, <laughs> my good friend is a DJ, and at one point, he kind of lives like an hour away. Well, now he lives more than an hour away from me, but I guess during the winter, he DJ, he lives in a beach town, so he normally like would have like a I don't want I guess it's a residency. He would like DJ at certain bars and places um, in his beach town. Right. Um, so in the summertime, I, when I would go to the beach, I would see him, blah, blah, blah. But in the wintertime, in the colder months, like to keep doing some DJ stuff, he inconsistently would stream on Twitch. And I hadn't heard of it, but I was like, sure, dude, like, I'll watch you. Like, I want to listen to you DJ. So if that's how I can do it. Sure. Mm -hmm. So I made the account. I was like, okay, cool. Um, I had the app on my phone. And, um, yeah, he kind of fell off streaming for like years. So I never really used it. I was like watching people play video games. Couldn't be me. Yeah, I get you. <laughs> Couldn't be me at all. Um, I just thought it was so weird. I was like, nobody wants, I don't want to watch people play games. I don't give a fuck. But I was, I always had the thought, I was like, I could do this. Like I play video games. Yeah. I'm not going to lie. My initial thoughts were a little, I don't know what you would call them, but I was like, I'm an okay looking gal. Like I could play video games. Like this was probably like later in college when I wasn't working at Mac and I was like poor. Right. And I was like, I wish I could do that and like make money. Yeah. Cause I thought about, not seriously, but I was intrigued with the whole cam girl situation, but I'm like, I'm not going to do, I'm not going to show my tids. Um, I also don't want to talk to weirdos. Yeah. It's like, it makes me uncomfortable. I don't like that kind of attention at all, like at all. Um, so I thought about it, but I was like, I, I don't know. I'm scared it, that'll happen being on the internet like that. I'm also afraid to be on the internet. <laughs> um, <laughs> oh, this is a bit. <laughs> it's going to be on the internet, by the way. With... Yeah, what was the question? I know, I know. I'm, like, slowly coming to terms with it. I feel like because Twitch is so, like, most of it is because my stepmom and my, not really so much my dad, but my stepmom is, like, they don't respect privacy. Right. I get it when I'm a kid. I understand that as a child, but, like, they don't care. Mm -hmm. anyway, like, they still don't care. Um, I think... I fly under the radar a little bit more, but I'm, it never ceases to surprise me when my stepmom snoops. Like I had my Instagram recently, not on private for like five seconds. And first she liked something on my artistry page. No big deal. That's not private. But I had my Instagram not private for five seconds for, I was just seeing, I was just testing it out. Mm -hmm. Within a week, there was one, I, she liked something from like, I liked a picture from 2013 and I was like, oh fuck. Snooping. Yeah. This was like, like 2019, her liking a picture from 2013. I was like, she fucking went through that whole thing. Yeah. Like I have some things on there. I definitely don't want her to see from things, from stuff that I did when I was a kid, like young, you know, that like, maybe it shouldn't be on the internet, but like, I got a fucking job that did a whole, whole ass background check on me. Like. Don't worry. I just have to ask you to pause for five minutes. I gotta go to the door. All right. Give me a sec. Okay. I'll I'll just point out to people that that was edited because I had to go answer the door. Um. So what what got you into streaming? What made you stream on Twitch? Okay. Yeah. That was the question i think how the name and then okay so why did i start streaming i always thought about doing it as i was saying um, i always was intrigued by doing it didn't have the equipment didn't know how to do it was also scared uh -huh. um it wasn't until like coco started streaming like maybe two years ago at this point um and he like you know, did it how a, a lot of people do it, where you're like, hey guys, thanks for watching, <laughs> and it's like no one, and it's like, see you next time. 
<laughs> to like one viewer and it was me. We've all been there. <laughs> We've all been there. Um, I'm thankful where I haven't really experienced that. Okay. And maybe if I did, I probably it probably wouldn't last because I would have been way too anxious and like not okay. Yeah. Uh, but who knows? Who knows? But yeah, he really, you know, he was in the trenches when he first started doing it and um, fell off of it. But um, with COVID and not working, also, um, I don't, I'm sure you've heard of Bill Savage or... I know the name. Yeah. Yeah. At least I've seen the name. Bill and Bill and Will, they, um, and my roommate, um the Quigley man on Twitch, uh, or Ryan, as I call him, <laughs> Bill, Ryan, and Will, and other people that were in real life friends with all played video games together. I don't think, I don't think Will has ever met Bill in person, but they've played okay. games together on PlayStation for years. Um, so they have that kind of relationship, but Bill started streaming and I don't, quite know how all the connection happened but through shauna baker's stream that's how bill met nick peak i believe okay and that's kind of how that all kind of came together um because nick is obviously real life friends with like weapon bill chamber mayhem and that whole group, there's so many people, and I'm not 100% confident in all of the inner workings of, of that whole network. Yeah. But, um, so that's how you found your way into WeStream, I guess. Yes, yes. So, um, Bill had asked Will to like start a Discord channel, um, known as SSA, Small Streamer Alliance, which like, <laughs> still exists, but it's not active, I'll say. Um, so like I created the logo for it. Um, cause I was like, yeah, let me support you streaming. Like, yes, I'm happy you're doing it again. I'm happy you have people to do it like with, to watch you and all that great stuff. So they started that and Bill Chamber was in that, um, Sweat Traps was in that. I believe Weapon was in that. I forget who was all in that initially cause I wasn't in it, but all I knew was that there was a group of people that would watch each other and raid into each other. And Will was so excited about it. And I was really excited. And whenever he would stream, like sometimes we would have our, our back and forth moments that some people enjoyed. And I wanted, I wanted, and I always, and that, that little, like that little desire to stream kind of was sparked up again. Okay. Um, but I still had some reservations about it. And I still like, I also was afraid to do it at first because I didn't want to like overstep Coco's thing. Gotcha. Um, yep. Cause when I do something, I put 110% effort into it. Um, so I didn't want to like feel like I was taking anything away from him or taking over or any of that kind of stuff, but it is something that I always wanted to do. Yeah. I just, didn't have the confidence to like figure out the whole streaming mechanics because I was like, how do you dream a PlayStation on the computer? <laughs> like, how do you do that? So it probably helped having all these people like being yeah, within a group already. Yeah, that definitely number one. Number two, um, Will had like most. He started to buy the equipment. Like he borrowed um, a webcam from our friend Julian, AKA Indie Julian. Oh, yep. Yep. Cause Julian used to stream music stuff like three years ago and then kind of fell off of it. And now he's starting to stream again, but he's kind of figuring out what he wants to do. Um, but anyways, yeah, he lent Will his video camera or his, uh, webcam. webcam yep. Um, Will's friends. I forget exactly who was all involved, but it was like Bill Savage, our roommate, Ryan, some other random people that you may see briefly in streams, but probably won't know, which is like C Mills. Is that his name on Twitch? I think. Um, the Sauce, which is Khan. Mm -hmm. I forget who else, but Nako and Cheese, his girlfriend Holly, yep. they all pitched in and is either whether it was buying new parts or, you know, some of them were really, were really into PC building and had some spare parts laying around. And, anyways, they built Will a PC. Yep. 
and gave it to him um, a couple years ago. And that was really nice that really they did kind, that. Yeah. Like, it was so nice because they wanted to, like, because Will moved to Philly and a lot of the friends are still in New Jersey. So they built that for him to, like, so that he could, because they kind of moved on from PlayStation into PC gaming. Um, and, you know, because of money and building a computer is really expensive. Mm-hmm. Um, they wanted him to be part of the group again. So they did that for him. And because of that, he was able to stream. Um, And then he started to slowly get things like a mic, lighting and all that stuff to stream. And then there was just one day, and this is a whole tangent. I apologize. (laughs) You're fine. Just 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 throw in some like SpongeBob cut scenes of like (laughs) one eternity later. Um, And then I'll get to the point. But um, so there was just like one day in June after seeing like Will make all these friends and I started watching like everyone's streams a little bit just to like get to know everybody that was watching Will, like not like in a crazy girlfriend kind of way, but just because I'm I'm the person that will become friends with anyone. Like I'll be in line waiting for at the DMV and I'm like, you're my new best friend. What's your Instagram? Like, I mean, <laughs> it just, I, I'm like, I get people's numbers. I become friends. I have like so many random connections that I've made just because I talk too much but anyway no (laughs) yeah my mom used to call me termite when I was little because I would just be like I had I had the gift of gab so anyway (laughs) but then I can be shy which is wild anyway so could not imagine it why did I start streaming there was one day in June I had a half day from work because I was taking a little neo to the vet and I got back early and Will was hanging out with friends in New Jersey. I forget what, exactly what he was doing. Or maybe he was going to his parents. I forget. He wasn't home. Okay. So, because it was during COVID and stuff. So, it wasn't like he was being bad, but being bad. Um, <laughs> he was probably seeing his parents. I honestly don't remember. But I was not home alone because I have I had a bunch of roommates at the time. But I was like, all right, let's do this like I had a very bare bones setup like he set it up for me Mm -hmm. and I just woke up that day and I was like I'm gonna stream today and before he left for work he like put something together for me where I could do it and I did and it was horrifying I think I played Sea of Thieves oh okay because that was I was gonna ask you what your first streamed game was yeah I think it was Sea of Thieves um I was playing with my friend Zach, not the streamer Zach, my real life, excuse me, my real life friend Zach, and I think my coworker and another friend from uh, that went to high school with my friend Zach, who went to a different high school because I didn't have friends in my own high school. I did, but I like. No, I, was, out. I was the weirdo in my high school like everyone was into like rap hip-hop whatever i was like metal <laughs> like bands like bleh. nobody was into that that i knew um i had my friends from dance anyways that's another tangent sorry um <laughs> you carry on with yeah that was my first stream and i wanted to play a game where i was talking to other people because if chat didn't give me something to vibe off of like I was gonna have a meltdown so that's what I did and then I started playing like Mario Odyssey because I had never played it and I was like yeah let's play it on stream and the rest is history yeah and you've you've come on a long way obviously since you started this year yeah I started in June got affiliate before July I think it was like two it was literally like a week and a half it was like really quick and you know mostly due to the we stream people although it wasn't as big as it was then um and we stream like me and will got invited to be in the we stream discord like before it was a thing yeah um and we were like oh my god they invited us like they <laughs> like us like i and everyone would talk all day on it and it was like a group text and it was just so nice i was like oh my gosh like they like us i was actually being a bad covid person in July for my friend's uh, birthday because she was moving to Florida for med school and I w- didn't know when I was going to see her again. So uh, her her sister booked like a room at a bougie place and it had a pool and I just did that little trip with them, which was scary because of COVID, but like mm. I didn't get it. So I guess it was fine. 
<laughs> but yeah, that, I was away and, and they invited me and I was like, well, did they invite you? And he was like, yeah. And I was like, oh my God, they like us. It's nice so to it be in really a community. Nice. Yeah. It's... It, it is. Yeah. I think that meeting them and streaming in general and all the connections I've made. And I think I'm going into another, I'm just interviewing myself. You don't even know that, so <laughs> I told you I'd leave me. I'll, I'll, I'll go away. It's fine. <laughs> I'll just end it there. Um, what's the next question? <laughs> well, I mean, it's good that you've kind of touched on WeStream a lot there as well, because it's, it's a big part of why we all know each other and why this is happening. So exactly. Um, it's totally fine with me but i okay. I kind of would like to know how you deal with juggling real life with your streaming because i don't know if you have a set schedule oh no i mean so do, how I'm do you go about have one starting tomorrow are you starting well, a schedule tomorrow. i mean i said i would start one in in the new year oh gotcha okay so well how do you feel like you're gonna juggle real life and a schedule with that's a hard question because you know, with COVID and everything, I'm not in the office uh, right now. So it's way easier to yeah. juggle the two things. Um, so I don't know what it's going to look like when I am back in the office, because I don't even know what going back to the office is going to look like at all. I might not have to, or I might have the option. And if that's the case, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> Because now that I have, we have like an office room slash stream room, I have this fucking desk now, which I didn't have before. It's a lot better working from home because I've really struggled with it at first. Um, yeah, there's really no balancing. They kind of blend into each other, to be honest. Like I'll be working and I'll have a stream up and like be networking and watching other people's streams. Yeah. Um, or if, if it was slow, I would, I taught myself Photoshop, like how to draw like emotes and stuff. So I spent like six hours making each of my emotes and the couple, the one of Will that I drew for him. Um, so yeah. And I would just make little things for my stream and set things up, um, whatever I could do without using Coco's PC while I was working because I couldn't, I didn't have the desk space to like do both like I do now. Yeah. It's quite uh, a tough question to ask in some of you because obviously where you only started streaming when COVID hit, mm -hmm. a lot yeah, of you work so, from home, so it's... Yeah, so I don't know what it's going to look like. Um, if I was to go back to work tomorrow and it was how it was before, I could probably get away with watching streams for a little bit. Yeah. Because our my cubicle is... Like I could stand up and still not see anybody like, and still feel like I'm in my own world because my cubicle is literally, I have, I have a bigger cubicle. So like, <laughs> Ooh, but, um, what is I'm showing even, off? I'm not even, I'm not even a, that I'm not even a big deal. Like I'm literally not even a big deal, but it just worked out. Like the first cubicle I had was a normal sized one, but then they wanted me to switch seats and right. be, clo be closer to my boss. And that was a bigger um, cubicle anyway. So I have like my boss literally came up behind me while I was watching like uh which you're gonna be like what but uh is like a little web series with two drag queens uh I also like to go to I like I also marry into drag okay another <laughs> hobby that I like so many hobbies coming out so many hobbies I know I'm like what do I what do I do what do I like um she literally came up behind me while I was watching something of like two drag queens talking about fucking doing acid and shit. And she was un unfazed, did not care. I was like, holy shit, I'm losing my job. And she was just like, oh, you know, that's fine. I watch TV while I work sometimes. And I was like, oh, okay. I mean, as long as she get any work done, I guess. Exactly. That's like how my boss is. I'm very, very thankful. Like, with with my boss and how things worked out in terms of like my professional career mm -hmm. um i never in a million years would imagine it to be the way that it is but anyways my boss is really cool she's like as long as you get your work done i don't care so i might be able to watch some streams definitely not as much because i will be in and out of meetings and when i'm in meetings i can't but i think i'll be able to like stop in and say hi at least to people during the day that are streaming what about with um, streaming yourself streaming myself do you think it'll TBD, impact it? I really don't know how that's going to go because I 
do have to drive to work. The commute's not bad. I remember like go, I, my schedule before streaming was I would work, come home, change, ride my bike to the gym, work out for an hour, come back home and then eat. And then I would chill. Mm -hmm. So I wouldn't start chilling until like eight o'clock. Um, and I don't stay up late and that's when I want to, you know, if I'm, if I worked out, I'm all sweaty and gross. I don't want to be on camera. It's really going to be something I'm going to have to figure out. Yeah. Um, so I'm hoping for the flexibility, um, to be able to work from home sometimes. So um, as that question is technically a lot of guesswork because you haven't had to go through it, mm -hmm. there is a sort of second part of the question when it comes to, if you're feeling fatigued or yeah. to say, I know you don't have a schedule, but you've set up events. Uh, for mm -hmm. like I don't know for the next day or whatever have you had the experience of where you wake up that day and where you really don't feel like doing it like yeah uh one one big example that I can think of is uh the extra life charity stream that was it ended up being really well but I and it's not even the charity stream itself it was just that particular day because it was my birthday weekend and I know it's COVID and we didn't really have I didn't have any crazy plans, but I did have plans to meet up with my friends um, in Center City to like get some drinks at an outside place. Um, and then it just happened to be when Biden won the election. So then that turned into a fucking shit show, but whatever. I mean, it was, it was a good experience. I'm glad I was out that day. Again, I didn't get COVID. So I yeah. it was another win. <laughs> um, <laughs> what a weird year. <laughs> yeah. Like, I don't know. I, I, most of the time I'm, I'm doing the right thing. I'm home. I'm not doing, I'm not going out. I order groceries. I barely go out. Um, but when I do, I yeah. try to be as safe as possible, yeah. but I have gone out and done some things. Um, anyway. So, so what mindset did you, did you go into? If you, if you work out not really feeling it, how did you? Um, because that I was, I was doing it with other people. Um, I followed through, but I like even the morning up more, the morning of like 30 minutes before the, we were going live, me and Will were like arguing and he was like, why did you tell them that you're going to do this? Like, just tell them you're not, just tell me you don't want to do it. And I was like, I have to, <laughs> um, so, and I did it and it was good and it ended up being really good. And apparently, I don't know if it's the videos created, but someone from the charity, like took a clip from my stream and asked me to use it for their recap video, um, for their, you know, 2020, um, game day uh -huh. recap. So I guess it worked out. Um, yeah. but if it's my own personal stream, I think there was a giveaway. <laughs> yeah. I think a couple, there was like two instances where I had like a bigger stream planned and like the day of, I didn't really feel like doing it, but I'm the kind of person if I say I'm going to do something, I do it. Yeah. So I usually just pull through and do it unless there's unless like it's an really bad reason. Yeah. Um, yeah. I remember like the first giveaway I did, I accidentally got two turned. I got two stoned <laughs> on stream. And I was like, I literally had to like put a BRB screen up, eat a bagel and like pull myself together because I was like, <laughs> We didn't even do the giveaway yet. They're watching. They're waiting. Like, you need to get your shit together. Um, <laughs> so I pulled it together and, and and finished it out. But I, like, I don't know what happened. I guess I didn't eat enough. And I just, like, I, like I said earlier, I'm a lightweight number one. So yeah, I just went a little wild. And I just, it probably didn't even show. But I felt so, like, not having my marbles together that i was just like oh shit lisa marie what have you done like but you pushed it through you got through it and i persevered yeah so typically i persevere um i have been feeling fatigue in general like recently but i think it's just with the year closing out and and the anticipation of fresh beginnings yeah um i'm kind of just like being really reflective and thinking about what I want to do for next year and what my goals are. I don't have them sorted out quite yet. I have an idea of the direction I want to go, but yeah, I took a week off like before Christmas of streaming. Just, I don't even know why I didn't even, it just was like a last minute decision and I didn't take as long of a break as I wanted to. Like I, I think I wanted to take like a week and I think it was just under a full week. Yep. It was like a, it was like a business week, I guess. <laughs> yeah. A working um, week. 
yeah, like I did miss streaming. I did miss like saying hi to people and 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 the feeling of streaming. Um, but it's good to have so a I, break. So I did it. Yeah, yeah. I think I also I was afraid that it, when I came back, I was going to be irrelevant. And <laughs> well, after a few days. <laughs> after five days, yeah. Um, yeah, uh, but that's uh, just me I being think hard on myself. <laughs> you could you could bugger off for a year, Wiz. I don't think you'd be irrelevant when you come back. You're fine. I don't know. I, I disagree, but that's just me being hard on myself and thinking everybody hates me. But <laughs> <laughs> no, those feelings have gotten better. Good, good. So if I as say I'm I'm sat here and I'm someone that's just about to start a stream, I'm I'm brand new. I've, I've never streamed before. Okay, I thought you said if I'm Saturday and I was like, <laughs> okay. I'll yeah, so if I'm stream. Saturday and you're Sunday, um, no. <laughs> <laughs> you're just starting to stream okay, yeah if i, I i'm new to twitch i'm about to stream are there any tips you would give me that you've learned from your time like your six months on twitch things that have gone wrong for you that you would you know give me your wisdom things that have gone wrong um don't get too turned which i don't get that bad i'm not like throwing up and falling asleep on camera but for myself i'm like <laughs> uncomfortable yeah so don't do that um i yeah i guess don't pay attention to the numbers too much i just recently turned off the view count i was hesitant of doing that for a while because i like to know and i still do like to know but there would be times where i would have like a decent number of, of viewers for myself and i would be feeling good and like yeah be into it and then like and then after like a week of having like that being my average view count mm. then if it dropped i would literally start looking for someone to raid and end stream yeah um and and i recently decided like maybe a couple weeks maybe like a month ago uh of, of of hiding it and what i'll do is if i want some satisfaction of seeing who's there or feeling that people are watching me not that i that sounds really vain but i just don't want to be i'm just very like i'm insecure but <laughs> i just I, I think we all like, like to know are watching yeah. yeah like i don't want to feel like i'm i don't know so when i do have those feelings i'll just look to see who is in there not necessarily like singling people out for like, oh, you're there and you're not, but just like just seeing the names. Yeah. It's not a number, but like seeing it, it, it helps a little bit. Yeah. Um, and I don't really check it that often. Maybe like maybe once during the stream, like towards the end, if I'm starting when I start to feel like I'm curious, yeah. I guess I'll peep. Um, I mean, one thing I will say is the number isn't always accurate either. It's I know that all too. over the and place. People the number's never accurate. Even the people they say that are there aren't technically accurate because I don't know. Every every other week I hear different things about, oh, you have to have you have to have the volume at, at least one percent, <laughs> only two tabs, um, all this stuff. Yeah. So yeah. Don't get too turned. Don't worry about like the viewers. Um and just don't get too caught up in the numbers in general. And there was something else that I was going to say. Yeah, I think mean, the oh, numbers is, one is the big one, yeah. This is kind of my pet peeve. Um, and I think I, sometimes I still fuck up, but I feel like it's with streamers that I have rapport with. And I think it's like, okay. And I'm not doing it in like a self-promoting kind of way. It's mm -hmm. just, I'm having a conversation and we're talking about streaming and I'm just sharing my experiences. But it, I, I try not to do it that often because I know it could bother people. Um, but I think if it's a natural conversation, I think it's fine. Mm -hmm. But my biggest, biggest, biggest pet peeve. And if you're a new streamer, don't do this. Do not do this. Do not say... I'm lurking because I'm streaming or like, oh. Hey, like I'm giving you a lurk. I'm streaming. I sometimes like to let streamers know when I step away from the computer and when I'm lurking or whatever, but I'm all over the place. And so inconsistent myself that like, 
I just disappear. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure many of you will be like having a conversation with me and then you'll never hear, not never hear from me again, but then like I'm gone. And then hours later, I'm like, what's up? Um, Because A, I'm, if I'm working, I'm doing a million things and maybe a call came up, maybe something in life, not life seriously came up, but I went to go to the bathroom and I just, my whole train of thought got derailed, Um, whatever. But I never, I rarely say I'm lurking. But if you let people know you're lurking, great. I appreciate that. I don't have a lurk command because like, I don't really care. Not that I don't care. Let me know. That's fine. If I don't see your name, I'm assuming you're not there, to be honest. Um, Or you're there and playing games. But if I don't see your name like in the chat, like you're lurking, you know? But yeah, don't say, hey, I have a tab open for you. Hey, I can't hear you because I'm streaming, but hi, mm. don't do that. I'll add to that if you don't mind me adding one to that. Is, yeah. um All right, got to go now. I'm going to go stream. That as well. That's like, <laughs> Fucking hell yeah. Same thing. Like, I get it. I think I may have done that earlier on, but like that was just me being genuine. Like I got to go because like I'm supposed to stream now, but like that wasn't like, give me like people in the chat watch my stream like that wasn't my intention you can do it by like, accident without thinking about the the way yeah, it might come like, across yeah so i stopped doing that i also <clears> like <throat> if i'm lurking and that's all i'm doing i won't i won't tell people because i i don't know like i'm just watching not that i'm trying to be sneaky but i don't want to like it depends on the person too but like i'm not always there to say hi for someone to give me a shout out i know everyone's different with how they like to do their shout outs and if they like to do them at all yeah but um yeah i don't need it i don't i don't want i don't care like if you do it that's nice that's because i'm i always like to shout people out but i'm just so passionate about everyone that i meet through twitch that like i want to like if i'm shouting you out it's because i want to um my mods shout out to zoji and, and mario for being always being being my rock stars but um i have other mods and you guys are great too but you guys you guys are just you know you guys are casual mods coco being one of them and this is no tear shade i'm just saying they're, they're, always, <laughs> they're always they're always there and i'm so spoiled because i don't even think about giving shout outs because they just know yeah. and then when they're not there because like they have lives too sometimes they'll be 20 minutes after a raid i'm like fuck we didn't shout that person out you like, realize I, what the mods do to, yeah you know yeah like i don't think about it because it just happens like i just feel so connected with them where they just do it when i'm thinking it yeah um what was the point i don't know what was the question yeah i will i don't know <laughs> pet peeves things not to do and now i'm on yes. a tangent so yeah don't like be self-promoting in that way um don't get too turned don't focus on the numbers. Okay. Um, yeah. I think that's pretty good advice. Mm-hmm. Um, I'd go with that. If there is a, there's I'm such a thing. I'm figuring it out too, so I don't. So that's yeah. all I got for now. I mean, there's such a thing as is Twitch etiquette. There's even I think mm-hmm. there's a page on Twitch's website that actually displays oh, right. a lot of the etiquette that you should show on. T- it's strange, but a lot of it makes sense. So it's not TOS. It's just etiquette. Oh, there's TOS as well. That's different. Careful, Wiz. Don't go doing naughty things. All right. I'll try not to. <laughs> so I like to know how people, um, when they finish in this stream, how they approach raids. Do you have a, an approach to your raids? Or uh, do you tend to just find people that you know every time? Yeah. Like, I know some, I know it's a, it's a nice idea and a good idea in theory to raid a random person. Um, I haven't done that yet. No. Um, only because nine times out of 10, there's someone on that I want to raid. Um, I know at first, yeah, I try to, I try to, I I don't know, like sometimes I have good raids and sometimes they're, they're not as good. And I mean, my raids aren't like, you know, super duper large numbers, but to some people that it might be. Um, any raid is an appreciated raid for most people. I would think. Exactly. Exactly. So, um, yeah, I know I kind of, I know like there was a moment where I was being a little bit too business minded with, I don't, if, if that's what I want to say with, with what I would do with the raids. Um, and I think sometimes that's good to like 
and I mean that in the sense of rating like a larger streamer, right? Uh -huh. like sometimes you 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 want to get yourself noticed into a new community mm -hmm. um, with people that do have a lot of eyes on them. It's networking. But you, it's networking. But then you also have to be careful because you don't you don't want it to come off as insincere and like I'm rating this person, so like they'll shout me out and like I'll get followers from that because at the end of the day. You might get one or two followers from a raid like that, mm -hmm. but like, that's not how you're going to build your community. No. Um, so typically now what I do is I try to raid people that I just really like their streams, whatever the reason is. Um, and, if, and especially if it's like someone I know that's new to the people that are currently watching me by the end of my stream. Um, because I want other people to meet other great streamers too. Yeah. Um, so I want, I know, you know what, to be honest, I know most of the time when someone raids, a lot of people just click out and like they're, they were there for whoever they were watching. And then like, maybe they were waiting for the stream to end to go do something. Yeah. Um, so not a lot of people are there. Like you might have the number, but not that many people are there, but you never know. Like, you don't know who's lurking. You don't, you don't know the situation. You don't know who's going to come back to their computer and be like, Oh, who's this? Mm -hmm. You know, where, 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 where have we traveled to? <laughs> yeah. And I think um, if you've gone to someone that's playing the same game, yeah. possibly it's, it's a bit different. Yeah. And you can do that. Like, again, I haven't, like, I'll, sometimes it'll just be a coincidence that I'm writing someone that is playing the same game, but it's really just people that I've met. And if they are streaming and I'm excited to catch them streaming and have the opportunity to raid them, mm -hmm. um, it's, 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 it's about networking and and making connections making genuine connections because that's what i really like doing and sometimes you know there's someone that i think is really cool really special and i want other people to 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 acknowledge that so i want my viewers to see them mm -hmm. um so that's really like if i'm reading someone new that's what it is otherwise i'm reading people that i obviously am buddies with so somebody from we stream so I feel like there's a, I always have someone to raid where I haven't had a, a situation where I had to find someone to raid. Yeah. Um, I do want to challenge myself to raid someone random, but I just find that there's always someone that I really, really want to raid um, because I don't always get to see them or whatever the case may be, especially when I'm off from work and I get to do my random daytime streams yeah. for eight hours. <laughs> I'm like, oh, or, you know, this person from the UK or this person from Australia. Like, actually, I haven't really been able to, to rate anyone, any of my Australian streamer buddies because of the time difference, but, and vice versa. But yeah, that's really my strategy is either, you know, a buddy, someone I like genuinely as a person yeah. or a streamer, um, or, you know, someone from the community. Um, but most of the time I try to introduce people, make connections because like, you know, I don't know, it's hard. I feel like a lot of my viewers are other streamers, which I think that's good to have some people watching and, and to network and become friends. But you do want, you want you viewers do, I, as well. You want viewers too, because mm. you don't always want to have to feel like you have to be watching people all the time. Mm. Otherwise, if you're not watching them enough, then they won't watch you anymore and, and all of that. So you do feel an obligation to, to be there for people's mm -hmm. streams. Yeah. Yeah, so then that's something that I've been struggling with recently because I'm meeting so many people that are streamers. Um, but yeah, so that's 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 the long answer to that question. Uh, it's usually just people that I want to introduce to others because that's what I like to do in okay. general, in real life. I like to network. Okay, that's cool. Um, so I'll move on to the last portion of the interview where I've got a couple of questions from people for you. Oh um, wow, people actually had questions. Yeah. Oh wow. Um we'll we'll have to try and condense them a little bit. Okay. Because you're gonna you're be gonna hours. you're gonna beat Marge's Marge's score at the moment. <laughs> I knew this was gonna happen. It's fine. It's absolutely fine. I just okay. almost fell asleep. Um no, I'm joking. Okay. First question <laughs> First question was from Raven and it was it's about you and Coco. She was just okay. curious about how you guys met. Okay, so some of you have already heard this story. I don't think I've ever maybe explained it like vocally, just in just textually. Textually. Um, but me and Coco <laughs> met the summer of 2012. Um, 
he had just graduated high school. I was like finishing my first year at college and we had mutual friends and um, my, our friend was house sitting a, a friend's house while they're their them and their family were away on vacation and I was there he did the bad thing where he had friends over the house, <laughs> his house sitting um none of my business though because I just was showing up somewhere that I was told that everybody was going to be at so yeah. I was there uh Coco was there in his in his headband Coco phase that's a joke kind of but um yeah he was there I was dating somebody at the time, but we like just, you know, briefly met each other. Um, And then, you know, he went away, just took, he started college and whatever. Um, So we had mutual friends and we would, our paths would cross usually like random summer events um, when he was home from school um, and all that stuff. So it wasn't until, I guess it was 2015, right? Because it's been five and a half years. Okay, so it mm-hmm. wasn't until 2015 where um, he intercepted a thirst trap <laughs> of mine. Okay. I don't think he can hear me. Hello? Yeah, he can't hear me. Um, <laughs> <laughs> he And I think I've told him this. It's not really that big of a deal. But um, he intervened a thirst trap. Him and his girlfriend, he had a girlfriend. It was like New Year's Eve, a few, like, going into 2015 actually we were at the same new year's eve party um i his his ex-girlfriend was there i don't even remember seeing her but that was also when i realized that that was also the first time i was in the same room as him and his twin brother because i met them separately and i was like why do you look so familiar that's a different story but he was like i have a twin and i was like (laughs) who and he said will and i was like what the fuck um anyway met them separately we're all at the same new year's eve party five years ago and that's when we like saw each other again after a while um i was single and mingling Mm -hmm. uh he was he just he ended his relationship soon after that um and then yeah he intercepted a thirst trap so i had met someone that i thought was really cute and we were at a party together and we didn't do anything, but we slept in the same bed, but didn't nothing happen. And then I had to go to work. So I left in the morning and I didn't get his phone number. I didn't get anything, but he followed me on Instagram mm-hmm. and I wanted to talk to this person more. So I thought I was sneaky by putting when Snapchat had their like little, that picture thing that you could like take a picture of or like someone's code and you can like add them as a Snapchat yep. friend. I like posted that as an Instagram post and thinking since that person just added me on Instagram, they were interested in me and they would maybe see that and, and do that. But that's some fucking very high context shit. Yeah. So the Coco added me on Snapchat and I remember getting the request. I was at the gym and I was like, Oh, okay, cool. Will he's cool. Um, and then he, we just were going back and forth on Snapchat. And then eventually he got my number. And then there was a, it was March. It was St. Patrick's Day. I, we were just like, oh yeah, like let's like hang out or whatever. I didn't have a car because my car like broke down in Philly the weekend before. I was going to see Excision in Philly with friends and yeah, ripped that car. Um, so he picked me up. We went out to dinner. I didn't realize he was not 20. I think I was 22 and he was 20. I didn't realize he couldn't drink. I was like, oh yeah, we'll just get some beers and wings. And he was like, I'm 20. And I literally said swerve. Like I literally (laughs) texted swerve. Because he was friends with my friend that was my age. So I assumed they were in the same grade when I met him years ago. Like I didn't know he just graduated high school. I had no fucking idea. I thought he was 19 or whatever it was at the time. Yeah. Um, so I was like, whatever, that's fine we'll still go. I'll have beer. You can have a fucking soda. Um, (laughs) and then afterwards I was like, Oh, let's like, so we went to the liquor store and I bought like some beers for us. And then I was like, let's go back to my house. Want some Netflix. Um, and the rest is history. (laughs) Well, yeah. So then he left at like two, three in the morning. Um, and Then afterwards, I was going to, like, text him, and I was like, fuck, where's my phone? Where's my phone? 
couldn't find my phone and I was like I must have left it in his car uh which I was like fuck because I didn't have a car at the time Mm -hmm. I was working two jobs the next day and I had to coordinate how I was going to get from job one to job two yeah so my whole next day was fucked but I figured it out, got to both jobs, whatever. That was all fine. But like, I didn't know how to contact him. So I didn't know he didn't use Facebook. So I messaged him like right when I realized that I couldn't find my phone. I was like, hey, is my phone in your car? Like, blah, blah, blah. I sent him like a Facebook message. Poor Will the next day has this like lovely date that he didn't know it was a date until uh, until later. Uh, he thought he got like, um, hit it and quitted for lack of better words, because I didn't text him all day. It wasn't until four o'clock the next day he was hanging out with some friends and they were like, what, whose pink phone is that? Hey, Will, when you saw my phone, when Brian pointed out my phone in your car, how, uh, explain, (laughs) explain, um, to chat. Uh, your thoughts at that moment. I was pleasantly surprised. <laughs> um, he was pleasantly surprised, which like, I don't know if he felt the same way, but if I had a date with someone that I was into, I mean, I'm assuming he was into me. He doesn't have a choice. Um, <laughs> she told he is now, at least. <laughs> yeah. Um, I would have fucking been a disaster if I texted them a few times and they weren't answering me. So I feel bad, but like, listen, I fucking, my phone fell to the bottom of his seat and whatever. So then we, I like, I think then he checked Facebook and he saw that I gave him my mom's cell phone number and then he texted her and I got my phone back that next night. But he was like, yeah, I automatically got a second date with her, which um, he probably would have gotten another one anyway, but Mm -hmm. it happened a little sooner than I think at the time I had wanted. (laughs) <laughs> so those are the humble beginnings of of the yeah. whiz, the Whizzington Coco. Yeah. Um yeah, so we just our first date was on on St. Patrick's Day and we just didn't stop hanging out. That's just... I think it, I think it wasn't it was some random time in June where I was sleeping at his parents' house at the time and I was like in his t-shirt and and his boxers like going to bed and he was like look at you all in my clothes like you're my girlfriend (laughs) or something and i was like well (laughs) what is that and that's when we were like established i guess it's kind of official at that point yeah yeah we don't know that date so we just go with saint patrick's day okay that's cool i think raven would appreciate the answer to that yeah, it's a cute little story, I think. Like, we knew each other for years. And, th- and I think this ties back to why it's not as dramatic and cinematic as the um, A Lot Like Love movie. Mm-hmm. But I feel like our <laughs> love story kind of is like that, but not as extreme. So that's about, like, Ashton Kutcher and Amanda Peet meeting each other randomly and, like, having this weird spark. But, like, they all they kept going their separate ways. I think they were each in different relationships. Mm-hmm. And they kept crossing paths at different points in their life. And then ultimately at the end, like when Ashton Kutcher's dude was like getting married, Amanda Pete was like, this is my man. And she like goes to his house on his wedding day and is like, oh. okay, I'm spoiled. Spoilers, spoilers. <laughs> but I think that's, <clears throat> like, I, I love that. I think, I don't know. And I just think that's like kind of how it happened with me and will because we met like three years before we started dating and like when we started texting or whatever like i honestly was like friends with benefits with somebody else that i like wanted to like get them to like me and want to date me Mm -hmm. which didn't work um obviously (laughs) it's funny how things work out for the best exactly and that's yeah so i feel like that whole um Yeah, that's, like, why I like that movie, and I think that's, like, why things with, like, me and Will is so cool, because he truly came from nowhere. Like, I knew him. I never thought we would be dating for this long at the time. Um, So if that gives anyone hope, 
That's good stuff. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's it should. Define love when you least expect it. <laughs> so if and we move... boy, did I try to avoid love for as long as possible. <laughs> Don't we all? Um, so if we move on to the final question, I'm going to challenge you to not go okay. on a tangent this one. Okay, I'll try. All right, this is a challenge to you, Miss Whizzington, the third Esquire. Um, Mayhem wants to know, as your community gets bigger, as it grows, how do you maintain close connections with people? Is it difficult? Um, yes. And I think just by playing games with them, with people in my community, I think, again, most of my community is, like, other streamers. Yeah. Um, in theory, I would like to do more with my Discord. Um, I just don't think it's as, like, poppin' as I would like it to be before. Not as I would like it to be, but, like, I would like to do, like, watch parties and stuff. But, like, yeah. I, my biggest fear is, like, doing that and then nobody's showing up. Um. So, but Discord's a good way to to keep yeah the community together. Discord, yeah. Twitter, and that's why I'm like on the fence about Instagram because I have a few people asking me. Mm -hmm. But I just yeah tangent. Um, <laughs> playing games, community games, um, and then just you know interacting through, um, Twitter and and Discord when I can. I think like with other streamers at least that are part of my community that's how i kind of because i can't make it to everyone's streams yeah. like i need to i do what i can during the day while i'm working because that's i'm too bored to actually work so <laughs> sometimes um so i'll you know watch people i want to watch during the day and i try to make it to see everybody um, but like after five o'clock and whether or not if i stream or not that day i'm either playing games with people from the community or you know, I watch a few people, but I need to, I need to veg out and like yeah. do my own thing. So that's typically when I lurk. So I feel bad for those that stream later that are in like time zones after like later than mine. Um, yeah. cause I don't give them as much love as I would like to, but it's not personal. It's just, I need to take time for myself. Yeah. You can't um, be on Twitch all day long. It's just, no, I can't, I can't, like I'm already sitting here like all day at work working. Like I, I need to move and stretch my legs and also not have a conversation with people yeah and be reading so I got you. you need your own me time as it were yeah yeah so i think i'm trying to find the balances because i think at first i was very gung-ho and i was in streams all day every day before my stream and after my stream till like 10 o'clock 11 30 10 30 and like i just i can't do that i need to talk to will i need to yeah. do what i gotta do um work on my own goals and stuff so i'm i'm trying to find that balance but i think other other channels of social media not just twitch and streaming and being in each other's streams is the key to that yes 100 percent uh, a good answer again there wiz i think um cutting down on the tangents I'm no they did well that time almost happened and then you pulled it back i'm proud of you Thanks. <laughs> but My you've done it. My brain works in a crazy way. We did it. We completed. You've completed the the interrogation, as it were. Hey, I literally um, sent a sweat when you stepped away. I was like, I'm currently being interrogated. <laughs> <laughs> I hope I hope it wasn't too bad on you. And um, no, it was good. I'm sorry if I, well, for all the tangents that it's I all good. Everybody You're through. all good. I'm sure. I'm sure <laughs> everyone will enjoy watching. And as as a note, I'll say, obviously. We we touched on it a bit earlier. You started streaming in June. You've mm -hmm. gone strength to strength in the six months. You've done it. You're, you've grown ridiculously fast, really, for the small amount of time. So I think you need to credit yourself on how you've how you've I don't know, just improved improved your stream month what? on month. I don't and... know her. I don't know her. <laughs> I don't know. It's never good enough what I do. But, but, that, but that's that that's <laughs> something that you need to work on and it's something you need to realise that you've you are very good. Yeah. You're a very good streamer, you're very entertaining to watch and I just well, think Thank you, I appreciate that. You need to you need to hear that. Um Thank you. You say that, other people say that, my boss tells me I do a good job and I'm just like, no, I'm a piece of shit. <laughs> I think that's just I think that's just what lights a fire under my ass to like keep me going. Yeah. Well, we'll just keep telling you then. 
No, okay. no, I mean, you don't have to. No, yeah. I will. I'm going to send like carrier pigeons to you that say it and stuff like that. Oh, gosh. All right. <laughs> <laughs> but thank you, Wiz, for taking part in this. I really appreciate it. Um, thank you, Potato. I can't believe people like voted for me to be a person <laughs> who interviewed. I can't believe that either. I didn't even get to vote. I feel bad because I didn't even know you were doing the poll. It's so fine. I'll I try mean, to pay attention to the next one. Everyone will be done eventually that wants to be done. Yeah. So it, it was okay. more of an order thing than, you know. But it's, yeah. I mean, you know, they're going to be watching live. So is there anything you want to say to people before we close out? More pressure. You can just say bye if you want. It's up to you. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> But on, on on that note, um, I mean, if thanks you... for watching. Thanks for giving a fuck. Um, <laughs> I appreciate it so much. Um, I, as you maybe picked up on, I'm my biggest like critic. Um, and with in real life friends, not that you guys aren't in real life friends at this point, but with like. I always felt like if I wasn't seeing my friends or being invited to do things, I always felt like something was up, that I was annoying people, and hey, that's probably the anxiety, but nine times out of ten. But I never felt that way with a lot of the people that I've met this year. Mm. Um, oh my god, I'm not getting emotional. Um, <laughs> I told you I would cry. No, I told you. No. I, I'm not. I'm not. My eyes just were dampening themselves. I have dry oh, okay. eye. Okay. Yeah. They're just. Got they're just. They're just yeah, a so little case of dry just, eye. Yeah, a little case of dry eye. But um, I never felt that way. And it's like it's just it's crazy to me that someone's interviewing me. It's not even a big deal. But like it's it's kind of cool that people want are gonna want to listen and I guess think I'm interesting. Yeah, I think I uh, you'll be surprised. I think. You, uh, how much people will enjoy watching this so oh, yeah i mean i thought bills was really interesting i thought commanders was really interesting and by the way it was probably chocoletti that came up with mudge yeah i, I think I it was commander and i'm the only one that does it um yeah but i think she pinned the blame on Hayes actually in the end for that one so yeah i don't know i think mudge rhyme sounds like sludge <laughs> so i just i don't know commanders more syllables but that's just what i called him <laughs> I love that that's the end of the, that, that's, the end. that's how we're going to close out the video um, <laughs> but, but thank you so much again Wiz and thank you everyone who is watching at the moment um, um, oh and stay hydrated friends stay hydrated you know with that yeah. smart water um, smart water <laughs> until next time uh, we'll catch you later um, I think Choco is next up so oh yes. Choco we'll, um, until next time again <laughs> Take it, take it easy, everyone. Have fun. All right. Take it easy. Bye. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>